Yo, welcome to Music is a Day Job. I'm your host, Sean, and this is brought to you by Concert. Concert is an artist accelerator app that takes artists from opener to headliner to on tour and gives the fan the best experience in independent live music shows. And make sure, for all artists that need to know this information, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe so we can start getting more artists and more artists so they can know about this. So make sure you make sure you do that right now. So this is part two of music industry myths. And um, we did the first three from 10, 9, and 8. 10 was the music industry has the most talented artist. 9, I need over a month to do a show. And 8, all I got to do is make a hit song. Okay, so now we're going to go number 7. Number seven, I can only do shows with artists that sound like me. Now, <laughs> I, this is the one I hear, especially from artists that aren't like huge, which is crazy to think because I can see if you're a big, big artist, you have a big, big brand and you start booking shows that you go like, I need the artist to sound similar to me and stuff like that to keep the same type of energy and everything like that. If that's what you're booking, great if you're that big of an artist and you can control those details um but then when you look at stuff like um rolling loud and coachella and everything like that these these festivals do not book like that and people can go see a lot of things now this is where this is a myth is because who knows a lot of people that just listen to one type of music <laughs> that's the question you have to ask yourself who knows a lot of people that just listen to one type of music like that will tell you dead to your face. I only listen to rap. I don't listen to R&B. <laughs> I don't listen to any pop. I only listen to rap or I only listen to country. I don't listen to no rock. I don't listen to rap. I don't listen to none of that. I only listen. It's not many people. Majority of people listen to a little bit of a lot of different things. And now because I, I feel artists get caught on this because the idea of how the radio stations play and see radio stations play things based on sounds like that because they keep the same feeling in like, for instance, like if I want to listen to country, I go to this station. If I want to listen to pop, I go to this station. So they become best in those fields of knowing what artists to break and what new songs are coming out. But when you go do shows, for instance, and a lower level, majority of the people that come see you are uh, half of them are probably only going to stay for your set. And on top of that, the other people are already dialed into the idea of I want to hear other things independent artists have to offer. Now, if we all remember talent shows, talent shows had everything in them. And that's because everybody came to support and just see the talent. I just want to see the talent. If I already knew who you were, then I could possibly like, for instance, if I already knew it's Cardi B, then I know what type of show I'm going to. But if I'm going to see independent talent, I'm going to see independent talent. See what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to see a little bit of everything. No one can build really a show around someone who possibly doesn't even know what their best sound is. Because, for instance, a lot of artists make tons of different styles of music, especially today. So then you could actually have a country song and a rap song and that just be you. <laughs> so then you're telling me you can only be around other artists to do country and rap. You see what I'm saying? So don't hold yourself in those boxes. And then this where this also happens is this makes it so you, don't, you may not find the fans that you are best fit for. I've been at shows that have been where I've opened up for artists that are totally not my genre. And the people rock with me more there than the people who were in my genre. <laughs> I performed, I've performed at tons of plays that I would never think people would love my music. Like I had the mayor, one of the mayors out here playing my music and he actually jumped on my mixtape. Because he was like, I'm shocked that this sounds so good to me. And like, he had never really listened to rap like that. And he started going, hey, I like this. And he came to our concerts, him and his family. So don't hold yourself thinking that way. 
Now, yes, you might you might want to do some shows that are in your genre and do some shows that ain't. Because you never know what can happen. You never know what collabs can come. A lot of people don't remember back in the day when I think it was uh Aerosmith and Aerosmith and Run DMC when they first did it. And that collab blew up. You know what I'm saying? You got um you got tons of these collabs that Lincoln Park and Jay-Z. You have tons of different collabs that have existed based on just the idea of great music, just creating great music. Even the even the infusion of just R&B and rap. I remember back in the day when rap would not touch R&B. Then now every hook is an R&B hook. Now almost every rap song dudes is singing on it. So it's like, hey, just open your mind and leave that myth away. Um, number six. I need the best sound and lighting to perform. <laughs> this is one I really don't like because I feel it's it's a cop out. Um, yes, of course, we all want great sound. We all want to sound super clear. We all want the lights to go. We all want that. But the reality is, is if I'm not putting 500 people in a building, I'm not going to be in a venue that can probably do or is capable of all of that. Now, this is just reality. What these venues are going to make based off of booking you and booking artists more than likely does not make sense to put the greatest sound and the greatest lighting in it, or even having the size of a venue that can actually be capable of having the greatest sound and greatest lighting. I heard an artist tell me one day, he was like, man, the sound man suck at these places that are these lower, like at the places he's performing. But when he performed with y'all, he's, oh, it was a manager. He was like, when he, when, when my artist performed with y'all, like, I was like, well, where did you go that had all this amazing sound and lighting? And he was like, well, when he performed with y'all. And I'm like, well, when I performed, which is the reason, like, I can bring over 500 people to a building. So it made sense because the building that I'm performing in <laughs> is that level of artist situation. But the reason you're there is because we're trying to get you to that level. And you have done better than a lot of people, but you still have to get to that level to be in those buildings. And that's not saying that about me because I will perform in an alley that smells like pee. <laughs> because I rap and I believe that the people outside will love my rapping. <laughs> So at the end of the day, the lighting and the 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 best sound is the cherry on top. The first step these artists need to get to is that you naturally can control the crowd and you can make people believe it's dope either way. That's where this myth is like killing a lot of artists because I see tons of dudes they go that's like, it's like a cop out. You know, well, the sound wouldn't. No, if you rock, you rock. I can put the mic down and I can rap out loud and just in front of people and they will all put their hands up and rock with me. I've done it in multiple situations where I couldn't use the mic. I've passed one mic around and made it work. Like, to me as a performer, I'm the interest here. Everything else is an additive. A mic for me to project additive the lighting to change every song additive me i need to figure out what is in me that makes the crowd want to rock with me that's where i have to figure out first so that's one of the biggest myths now number six number six uh, oh well that was number six number five i should only perform when i drop new music this is another one i know <laughs> this is another one that's a music industry myth Music industry, in the music industry, what happens to a lot of artists is when they drop new music, that's when they get to tour. And they tour for how long the music stays caught on. And then after that, for them to go on tour, they usually go through another cycle of new music. Now, this is why this doesn't make sense. I'm going to give you all just a little insider that it's probably horrible for me, but... I only have one album. Like me and my group, we only have one album that we've made over 15 years. Now we've made tons of singles, of course, but only one real album. Prior to us being a group, we both made albums and stuff like that. But as a group, we only made one album. 
I don't have a million fans. Nowhere near a million fans. I probably don't even have 10,000 fans, like to be honest with you. I know I have, I at one point I had around three to 5,000 people that uh, were really fans that would actually purchase a ticket to see me. And this is spread amongst multiple markets. So I am not nowhere near famous. I was able to live off that because I've told you the I idea of how much money you have to make per fan, everything like that. And I was able to live comfortably. However, with that idea, I'm performing very similar sets all the time. And this is because an artist, if I perform for 100 people tonight, 200 people, tomorrow I'm performing for another 200 people. I could perform for a different set of 200 people <laughs> in a state. Like, a million people can be in a, let's say a million people are in the state. How many 200 sets of 200 do you think you could do before they see you twice? <laughs> I'm just being real with you. So for independent artists to believe this is crazy because a lot, I don't even get time to catch on to the song. I see an artist right now and I'll be like, I'll see a song I like. And then the next time they perform, they're going to have an all, all new set. Now the song I like, he, he, he ain't even performing. I need to see you at least three times for, because I don't get the same media outlets that I get from the industry. So I need to see you at least three, four times before I done caught on the song. Like by the fourth time, I know the lyrics probably. I know a good bit of the lyrics. But the first time I'm gonna be like, oh, that's a dope song. The second time when I hear it, I'm like, that's that song that I heard. The third time, I'm going to be like, yo, man, play that song, man. Play that song that you you be doing like this and, and make sure I, I get I get online and I go listen to it all the time. By the time the fourth time come, I know the whole song. So on the fifth time, you're going to have to perform it because now I'm ready. <laughs> now I'm ready for the song. By the fifth time, I done seen you rock it. Now, how many people you got to get into their mind to do that? So don't be waiting because I, I, I got dudes It's like it's impossible to live off music and you only perform it one time a year. Come on. Like unless you writing or you doing other stuff, you the artist and you trying to perform for you to do that. You can't just perform every time you drop a song like a, a national does. You have to keep performing all the time. New music or not. And if you already got songs that are sticking, keep running them. Keep running them because you don't know when it can pop. If they sticking, keep them. If they're not sticking, throw them away and yeah, throw some new music in there. But keep the ones that sticking. Keep them going. Keep them going. Now, for that was seven, six, and five. So I think I'm going to do the last four in the last episode. So I'm going to save the last four for the last episode because we're going in time. <laughs> like the time's running. I'm just talking, talking, talking. My bad, y'all. But either way, those were, that was seven, six, and five, seven. I can only do shows with artists that sound like me. Six, I need the best sound and lighting to perform. And five, I should only perform when I drop new music. Top myths. Next episode, we'll be doing the last four top myths in the music industry. This has been Music as a Day Job. It's brought to you by the concert app. Of course, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so everyone can learn this knowledge and they can keep moving and so they can get close to music as their day job. The concert app, of course, booking shows everywhere. Make sure you get onto the app. It's on Google app. Uh, well, Google Play Store, iOS, Apple Store. Make sure you get on. Make sure you tell all the artists around wherever you are to start getting on that's the easiest way i can get to you and start building the concert app out where you are if you know venues make sure you let me know because that's the quickest way i can get out to you and start building giving giving the demand what it needs so artists can start turning music as a day job of course we are already in colorado utah arizona we'll be in nevada and texas in the next few months we're gonna keep going and keep growing so Make sure you let everybody know about the concert app. This has been Music is a Day Job. I'm your host, Sean.